peeps. Okay, so you probably guessed from the title of my video that I I decided I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do a video talking about the vaccine. COVID. Ooh. Um I just I kind of figured I've kind of have an inside perspective being that I'm immunocompromised and I'm in the hospital every week and um, <clears throat> I get screened by doctors every week and I get asked every week if I've had my vaccine and um, recently I have had two very different experiences from two different doctors um, and it just kind of shocked me the difference in opinion. Um, <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> excuse my voice. I'm way better, but I'm still getting over a cold. Um, a few, few couple months ago, like back in the spring, I, I got a letter in the mail um, saying I was in the extremely vulnerable category as indicated by my medical team, okay? So I assume this letter came because my doctor referenced me, you know, uh, sent in my name, whatever, however it works, to say that I'm extremely vulnerable and I should have the vaccine as soon as possible. Um, <clears throat> so this letter essentially allowed me to go regardless of what category was being allowed. I could just bump ahead and just go whenever I pleased. I didn't go because like most people I had a little bit of trepidation I was you know worried about what it might do to me maybe um, everybody around me has now had it my husband went for his too um, my friend Garth went for his <clears throat> um, my good all of my good close friends have all had both doses um, and I figured, you know, they're the people I'm around. I'm pretty much covered anyway, and I don't go anywhere but the hospital and home. Um, very rarely I would go get groceries or something, masked up and whatever. Um, okay, so then I received a second letter in the mail telling me that I could go for my second dose, um, but I hadn't gone for my first dose yet. Um, and like one of the other reasons that I was putting it off um, is because I wanted to, <clears throat> um, I had a CT coming up and in order to get my vaccine, I have to miss a round of chemo. And before my CTs, I always like to have as much, as much chemo in my system as possible. I just, I really like to just hit this thing with everything I can. So that when I go for my CT, that I'm everything looks good and I'm still stable. Like I just don't want it to gain any ground. Um, it's my own paranoia. Like I know it, in one week it's not going to gain like a lot of anything. But that that's why I was putting it off too. Is because I I I, I didn't want to miss a round of chemo to get my vaccine. Um. So then uh, my doctors I ended up having a week off. And I phoned to get my vaccine and they didn't have any. They were out. So I was like, screw it, I'll just wait. Um, so then just this last, um, just this last month here, I think in, where are we, August? We're at the end of August. So the end of July, I had a chemo review and he told me, okay, um, <clears throat> to negate the, some side effects like neuropathy he said okay we're gonna do three rounds on and we're gonna give you one week off this is my actual oncologist the, the doctor that is handling my case so when he said that to me I said okay great I will book my vaccine my COVID-19 vaccine for the week I have off and he was not that excited. Um, he was like, well, you know, like if that's what you want to do, you know, like maybe, maybe, you know, if, if that's how you feel. But he's like, you know, um, you, you are, you're, you're immunosuppressed. So he's like, you are, um, you know, you're vulnerable to everything, even regular flu, regular cold. 
um, you know, your, the vaccine it would provide you some coverage, you know, but based on your immune system, like you wouldn't be, it wouldn't be that high of a coverage, but it would still be some, you know, so it would be worth it to get. Um, but he said, you know, you're not, he said, I'm not extremely vulnerable. So why did I get a letter saying I was, and who was the letter actually from then? Because my medical team does not identify me as extremely vulnerable. So that's kind of a question mark to me, but whatever. Um, because he didn't seem that excited. And he wasn't like, yes, go for it, do it. You need to do it now. Why haven't you done it already, right? I was like, okay, well, maybe I can just... Maybe I will just wait and take this week off to, like he said, just, you know, detox for his from chemo and, you know, boost your system back up and recover a little bit before you go for your next round. So I was like, okay, so I didn't book it. I didn't go. I was like, if my doctor isn't like gung-ho, like, yes, go. You should do it immediately. Then I'm not going to worry about it. Right? I'm not that worried if he's not. All right. So this brings me to experience number two. Um, so I talk to my own doctor like every couple months and then in between I still do a chemo review by phone, but it's usually by one of his fellow physicians or like his assistant physician, you know. Um, so that's who it was just literally like last week. Okay, now I have to also preface this by saying, in the meantime, I last week... It was supposed to be my week off from chemo to like feel better and recoup and instead I caught a cold. Um, which I am now over with. My voice is probably going to be the last thing to recover just because I have a weakness there anyway. Um, but I'm definitely feeling so much better. It was literally like a regular cold. It came. It went. I was never completely bedridden. I just kind of felt crappy. I got a little bit of a cough for a day. I sneezed for a day and I lost my voice for a day. Three days of kind of misery and then I started to feel better. So I just, I need to say that because it goes with the next experience. It was Thursday last week, this doctor phoned me. Again, not mine, not my actual doctor, just to help her. And we went over my side effects and how I'm doing with them and like how my fingers and toes are feeling and like how things are going and I said, that's all great. You know, it's feeling much better. Um, it's still there, but it's not extreme, blah, blah, blah. Um, but of course, I have to divulge that I got a cold, okay? So, I do this, I tell him, listen, like I'm already starting to feel better, like I'm still nasally and kind of sneezing. I only had a mild cough, no, like not really a lot more than I usually have, um, blah, blah, blah. Right away, the first question he asks me is, did you go get tested? I said, no, because like, it wasn't that severe, like, I know how cold feels and I'm already starting to feel better, so no. It's like, well, have you been vaccinated? I said, no. Why not? Oh. I was like, well, because I have to plan it. I gave him the same line. Part of it, I was like, I have to plan it around chemo. He's like, well, you just had 14 days off. You could have gotten your shot. I was like, no. I said I had chemo. Then I had to wait a week for those side effects to kind of go away because I don't know what the shot's going to do, right? Some people have no side effects, some people do. So I said then I was planning to go on Monday. It wasn't really. But whatever, I thought I need to appease this man before he like sends the army after me or something. I was like, then I got the cold on Monday and blah, blah, this up brings us to now and then I have chemo this coming Monday, whatever. So he's like, well, you, you know, you had time. You should have. Why haven't you gone before now? I said, well, I have to miss a round of chemo, bef you know, in order to get my shot. And uh, sorry, I just turned my light off again. Um, so while he's berating me, he's like, well, you really should get it. And you should have got it by now. And like, whatever. So I basically had to promise him. That if I didn't feel better by like this past Monday that I would go get tested and that I would plan to get my vaccine as soon as possible. 
<gasps> um, to finally get him like off my back. But like, I don't, I don't need to be scalded by you. And quite frankly, my doctor is the one I'm going to listen to, right? He's my doctor. He knows my case. He doesn't think I'm extremely vulnerable. So for now, shut it is what I felt like saying whatever he's like well whatever he's like let's just get back to your chemo side effects and like how you're feeling now and whatever and so he's just short with me i was like i don't need to be talked down to like i'm a child um so then whenever we got back to the chemo so he's like well i have to postpone your chemo so i'm this past monday i was supposed to go so obviously like i couldn't go he's like you have to be symptom free for 48 hours before you can go whatever i was like fine okay whatever like that's fine, you know, if I'm not feeling better. And I probably would have. If I wasn't feeling better by Monday, if I was still coughing or I was still sneezing or, like, I was still really sick, I would have went. I probably would have went and bit the bullet and got tested and whatever. But I was better. Like, I'm fine. So that was, like, my second experience. <laughs> like, polar opposite of two doctors working in the same area they're both oncologists they both work for the ellen blair they're both basically colleagues and that was like the two differences okay anyway so that brings me to personal choice so um <clears throat> i actually have changed my mind on the vaccine front because uh, hang on a second <laughs> my throat gets very dry and then my voice takes a little bit more to push out um I changed my mind a little bit because when I got that cold like I'm not gonna say that I wasn't worried you know I was taking my temperature like every 10 minutes I've I never had a fever I was almost there for like an hour one night but I was still wasn't in the fever range I was just higher um, but it really, it actually really scared me and really kind of changed my mind. So the next time I get a break, I actually will be getting my first dose because, um, baby, you need to go. My dog's just all over me. Go, you need to go. Um, the cat again, animal life. Anyway, um, it really did kind of change my mind. Baby, you need to go, 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 go. I really need to finish this. Um, it changed my mind because I don't, I didn't really like the anxiety and the fear because what if I did get it? I would be off chemo for as long as it took to get over. It could potentially affect me really, really bad because my cancer is in my lungs and COVID likes to go for the weaknesses and it likes to attack your lungs and it can cause permanent damage and I've already got something permanent going on in there. So it really did change my mind, the fact that you know, um, even even 50% coverage is better than nothing. You know, like the next time I get the sniffles, I don't want to fear for my life. Because I already do. Because on chemo, it can go south so fast. So even just a regular cold can potentially turn quite dangerous. So it really did kind of change my perspective. It's still, to me, a matter of personal choice, though. Um... Do I think maybe it should be a thing? Maybe for the common good. You know, maybe you don't feel you're vulnerable, but maybe somebody you're around is. Um, you know, because you can potentially carry it even if you're not sick. But do I feel it should be forced and people should be berated and belittled because they didn't get it? No. Um... Um, yeah, so I'm going to leave it there, and I just, I really wish people would just stop. Just stop. It makes, I mean, I, I know some people who aren't getting the vaccine, and they don't want their kids to maybe have it right away, or they, you know, and that's okay too. I'm like, I just, <clears throat> I just want people to stop. That's it. Just, just, just to each his own. Let people make their own decisions for themselves and leave it alone. And uh, on that note, I'm just going to uh, say talk to you later. <laughs>